Hi there, I'm Dee Dee Daniels. I'm a fitness professional right here in the South Bay. I'm also a certified senior fitness specialist with many clients age 65 and over. Did you know that after age 25, our balance begins to decline? The older the person, the more decline they may experience. But in most cases, this is something we can control. We can slow down and even reverse some of the decline. Creating better balance means we must safely challenge all three of our balancing systems. Our muscles and joints, and we can do that by performing balancing poses. Our vision, and we can do that by closing one or even both eyes. And our inner ears, we can do that by changing our head position. So to guide us through this Balance Basics workout today, I'm pleased to introduce a guest instructor, Dr. Linda Rowe. Dr. Rowe has been a licensed chiropractor, as well as a yoga and fitness professional for nearly 20 years. Her practice is right here in the South Bay. Dr. Linda, welcome to Peninsula Fitness. What do we need today for our workout? I'm happy to be here. So what we'll need is just a few simple things. First is because we're gonna be doing some balancing standing poses, to have a sturdy chair, perhaps a wall, maybe it's the back of the couch, just something to have next to you so that you can have some additional support should you need it. Since we're gonna be standing and balancing, bare feet is preferred. If you need to keep your socks or shoes on, that is perfectly fine as well. And then we will be coming down to the floor a little bit later, so if you're not on carpet, you might want to have some kind of cushion mat, maybe a yoga mat um, on hand as well. Got it, great. Okay. So are we ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So let's do a little warm up to start. Warming up with some plie, plie squats. Go ahead and just widen your stance. Take your toes out. And just as you start to bend, you can shift from side to side to get a comfortable stance. And then taking your hands onto your thighs, that's perfect. Go ahead and squat down and come up. And squatting down, coming up. So you're warming up the muscles, warming up the joints in the lower body. A few more times. Feels good. Good. Let's do two more. And then if it's comfortable, bringing your arms out in front. I feel that I'm having to balance a little bit here just doing this. Absolutely, absolutely. And just two more here. Okay, so bring the feet hip width apart. And you can take your hands on your hips if that's comfortable. And lifting one leg up and bringing it down. Shifting from side to side, again, a little more of a balance component. And warming up the ankles just a little bit more. You can start to point your toes toward the floor as you lift. So if I needed my chair right here, Absolutely. I would have my hand on the back of it. Exactly. Or against a wall. Exactly. Just a few more times, again, just bringing a little bit of heat to the body, to the muscles, getting the circulation going. And then when you're ready, we'll come to just a basic standing position. So this standing position, as you can see, Dee Dee has her feet hip width apart and her arms are alongside the body. So we're going to start to build this balancing standing foundation from the feet up. So let's talk about the feet a little bit. So looking at your feet, I want you to balance on the three points of the feet, each side of the ball of the foot and then the center of the heel. So once the feet are parallel to one another, hip width apart, find those three points. And you can access those three points a little bit easier by lifting up your toes, spreading them, and then gently relaxing them back down. And that will bring those three points a little more to um, access them. I do feel that, yeah. Okay, so let's start to work our way up the legs, coming to the thighs. So think about lifting the front of the thighs, contracting the quadriceps. 
And then from here, we're going to work up to the inner core area by finding your pelvic floor muscles. And if you have a yoga block handy, or even maybe just a cushion, a small cushion from your couch, you can go ahead and take it. And Didi, I'm gonna hand this to you. Can you take this and place it right into your inner thigh muscles? And by gently squeezing into this block, you will start to access these inner thigh muscles that are connected to that pelvic floor, and you'll feel a little bit of a lift. And perhaps you might even start to feel contraction of the lower abdominal muscles at the same time. Once you have that lift, you can go ahead and hand it to me. And then keeping that feeling, go ahead and just, if below the navel, these lower abdominal muscles, just a gentle contraction to that as well. So this is a nice foundation for you to work on. We're balancing on both feet right now. Later we will be, or soon we'll be shifting to one foot. But just for here, just to notice that, let's test that out. So Dee, why don't I have you just reach over to one side and reach to the other side. And just notice how there's maybe a little more stability. Perhaps maybe you're reaching up and over to the cupboard to reach for that coffee mug up on the top or to the other side. So thinking about all that that we've just talked about. Feels very stable. Okay, nice. good. Actually, very nice. Okay. So we're going to come into our first pose or exercise. And this is what traditionally in yoga would be called mountain pose. Same posture. Arms at your side. Let's think about just lifting the chest a little bit, relax the shoulders down. The head is in line in between the shoulders right over the rest of the spine. And then from here we'll test ourselves a little bit more so by taking away the visual. Close your eyes for a few seconds. I can feel that it's more challenging. And then opening your eyes. Wow, that's quite a difference. Yes, yes, yes. So let's go ahead and move to a one leg stand. So shifting the weight to one foot, still think about those three points with the foot, using every other thing we've talked about, the firming of the thigh. The toe can stay on the floor to start, or maybe even to stay there. To progress in this, I'm gonna have you lift your leg up. And then adding the arms, go ahead and take the arms out to the side and then challenging ourselves just a little bit more. Go ahead and turn and look to one side. And then coming back to center and release the arms, release the leg. That is a lot more challenging when you add the head turn. My yes, goodness. yes. And, and to start, it is good to look at one focal point. I know we're looking at the television today, but when you're practicing this on your own, you can just have one focal point in front of you. So other side, lifting, adding the arms, looking to the other side. and coming back to center. So if you are on a hard bare floor, it's going to be a little bit easier. If you're on a cushiony carpet, it can be a little bit more challenging. Okay, how's that? Great. Okay, so we'll come into our final balancing pose standing, which is yoga traditionally called tree pose. And for here, let's go ahead and shift to the one side hands can stay on the hips, or let's go ahead and place your hands in front of your heart center, in front of your sternum. And as Dee Dee has it, the toes can stay on the floor, or we can also have her slide her leg up. And then to add the arms, taking the arms out to the side. Perfect. Is it important to keep breathing here? Absolutely. It's always important to keep breathing. Smooth, even, deep breathing is optimal. And releasing when you're ready and coming back down. So start to shift the weight. Find the three points in the foot. Lift, open up with the hip. And adding the arms and breathing and then releasing it when you're ready
and we're going to be making our way toward the floor. Okay, so here we are on the floor. Turn so you can see us, and Didi is going to come onto all fours. Hands are under the shoulders. If there is any discomfort in the wrist, Didi is going to show us a modification that you can use. Okay. And then just making sure that the knees are going to be also hip width apart. So go ahead and start to extend one leg back and the toes can stay on the floor. This is going to add a little bit of balance to it and then bringing the opposite leg back. Okay, and bringing your knee back to center. Let's go ahead and have you extend the first leg back. So the toes can stay on the floor, but for more challenge, Dee Dee is bringing her leg parallel to the floor and bringing it back down. So we're gonna add another component adding the arms. So go ahead and start with your first leg, bringing it back, holding here, keeping the hips level, and then you're going to extend your opposite leg or opposite arm. So they're opposite one another. So fingertips can stay on the floor. For more challenge, lift the arm so it is also parallel to the floor, and then release them down, keeping the back of the neck long. So looking toward the floor as much as possible, and then extending the opposite leg back. Lift the toes if possible. Reach the arm forward. And progressing by lifting the arm. And bring them both down. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a rest. In child's pose, the hips can go all the way to the heels. Or if you prefer, coming into more of a what we call a puppy dog pose where the hips can stay lifted and supporting the head by stacking your wrists on top of one another. So either or, deep breathing here, we're always breathing deep. And then Didi, whenever you are ready, we'll go ahead and come back onto our all fours position. Same thing, hands under the shoulders, knees apart. And we're going to be this time bringing the leg out to the side. So starting with your first leg, lifting it up and bringing it back down. Oh, that's tough. Noticing how that <laughs> does challenge the balance and the muscles. Go ahead and switch to the opposite side and bring it back down. Again, we're going to build on this. Lift the leg out to the side, and then we're using the opposite arm. So go ahead, Didi, and just extend it out. The, the fingers can stay on the floor, and then if you feel sturdy enough, the arm can reach up as well. Beautiful. I see you're <laughs> working hard here. Go ahead and bring them both back down. That's tough. Yes, it is. Lifting the leg to start, and then if you want to add, bring the arm, lift it up. Still breathing, and bring it back down. So for this one, we're going to be working on our side. So coming onto your side, just make sure again that you can see, the, see us when you come onto your side. And I want the elbow directly underneath the shoulder. Your hips are gonna be stacked. The knees are bent. And this should feel comfortable. Go ahead and just press a little bit more into your forearm and elbow. Just notice how that takes the shoulder away from the ear and stabilizes the shoulder blade. You're going to be already working part of your core here. So this is where you can stay. If you want to build on, start to lift your hips. And Didi, why don't you go ahead and lower it back down again. So with your breath, let's do two more. So you can inhale, lift a little or a little more and lower down and then lifting once again if you want to stay here go ahead and stay here and we're going to progress even more so taking your arm reaching it up beautiful and then bringing it toward you in front and adding some dynamic movement challenging your balance your core just a little bit more why don't you do two more And then after this one, 
Let the hips come down. Let your arm come down. And then switching to the other side so you can still see the see us. Same thing, setting up your proper alignment. So the elbow is under the shoulder. Hips are stacked, knees are bent. Go ahead and press a little more into that elbow. Get your shoulder nice and stable. Stay here or lift the hips. Lower down. Flow two more times. Still breathing. And then on your third one, lift, bring the arm up, and add some dynamic flowing movement with the arm. I feel this in my core for sure. Yes, you do. It's working a lot of your core muscles, which is very important in balance. And having yourself come back down again. Dee Dee, let's have you come all the way on to your back. Keeping the knees bent, we're going into what is called a bridge pose. But for all of you, if you could just take a moment to watch Dee Dee first, we'll briefly go through it and then you can join us. So from here, the, heel, the heels are going to be towards your glutes, but leave about maybe eight inches or a foot distance in between. Lifting the hips up. Staying here to build a little bit. Lift one heel up and lower back down again. We're just briefly showing you for a moment. Lift the other, bring it down, and then lift your hips all the way down. So that's going to be the first time through. The second time through will bring it a little bit more challenging as you lift your hips. And then if you can extend this leg out so the thighs are gonna be parallel to one another, bring it back down and switch to your other side. And bring it down, go ahead and release the hips. So let's go ahead and have you join us this time. Arms are at your side. And when you're ready, lifting the hips. Staying here or lift one heel. Lower down. Lift your opposite heel. I feel core, lower body and balance. Absolutely. Very involved posture. Go ahead and lower down your heel and then slowly let your hips come down. Using control, using your muscles. Just take a moment to breathe and rest. And then Dee Dee, when you're ready, you're pressing evenly into your feet. Lifting your hips, coming more onto your shoulder. So if you want to continue with the heel lift, go ahead. Or if you want to challenge yourself a little more, a lifting more. one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and really keep those hips lifted as you're doing this. Bring it back down. Keep the hips lifted as much as you can. And then switch sides. Excellent. Release it down, and then with control, slowly lower those hips down again. Mm. And this should feel really good, yes, bringing those knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice big hug. It may feel more comfortable to wrap your arms around your thighs or underneath rather than grabbing hold of the knees, whatever feels right, and it may be rocking from side to side. Stretching out the muscles and the hips and the back. And then rolling all the way over onto your side. We're going to get up safely. So pressing into your hand, pushing yourself up till you come to all fours. Sweeping one leg in front. 
You can take your hands onto your thighs and then press yourself up to standing. You can use a chair, I would imagine, or something else that's sturdy like a couch. Absolutely, a, a sturdy chair. chair. Okay, so we're going to start with the final balancing pose that we're doing, our standing pose, a little more complex, we'll build up on it, called Warrior Three, And this is a modified version of it. So Dee Dee, I'm having you place your fingers, as you have it already, on the back of the chair. And then from here, I'll have you take one leg back, so you're balancing on one foot. The toes can stay on the floor. And then as you're ready, begin to lift the leg. As you're lifting the leg, notice how Dee Dee is lowering her tors torso down at the same time. Building from here, having one arm coming out, and then added challenge, both arms out. Leveling off the pelvis, balancing on those three points on the feet will help. And then when you're ready, bring the hands back to your support and come back to balancing on both feet. That's challenging for my standing leg, my hip, and my balance. Yes, yes. So we'll do the same thing on the other leg. Taking your time. Once you feel the support with the leg and you feel balanced, then we're ready to add on and still breathing. Okay. And coming to standing. So now we're going to start to stretch all those muscles we've been working. Let's start with a nice quadricep stretch. So you may need to walk a little bit closer, whatever's comfortable for you. And then reaching back, grabbing hold of one foot, one ankle with the same side hand. If you can't reach your foot, you can always reach for your pant leg or um, working toward it, doing the best that you can. And think about pressing the hips a little forward, lift the chest, feel that nice stretch through the front of the thigh. And then we're going to stretch the calf muscles of that same leg. So when you're ready, you can release the leg down and just let that leg come all the way back, taking a big step, front knee is bent. Let's stretch those out, take your time. Bring that foot back and then switching to your other leg. Start with the quad stretch. Reaching for your pant leg or your ankle foot. Pressing the hips forward. This nice is actually breathing. a little challenge for the balance too, especially if I did not have my hand on the chair. Yes, you could add that additional component if you wanted to. And step all the way back. And then same with this. If I didn't want the support of the chair because I felt stable, this could challenge my balance a little bit as well. Exactly. Good point. And let's go ahead and have you step forward. And we're going to come into a seated position now. Let's do a nice spine twist. So sitting up tall, you may want to come to the, more toward the front of your seat. Sitting up nice and tall. Let's just go ahead and take your arms out to the side. Inhale, lengthen, sitting tall, and exhale, twisting to one side. Using your core muscles to twist, and then releasing the hands down. Turn your head to a comfortable position and breathing here, keeping that nice length through your spine. This is stretching the spine muscles. It's also working the core here. And let's have you come back to center. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist to the other side. 
turning your head to a comfortable position. Nice breathing. This should feel pretty good. And then making your way back to center. So we're going to bring one leg and cross it over the thigh. So you may want to sit a little further back in your chair for this one. Just find that place where you're able to reach, grab hold of the foot if you want to, or otherwise we're going to do some nice ankle rotations. So rotating it or using the assistance of your hand. That feels nice. The feet had to work really hard as you said earlier. And also the ankles and calves. Yes. And then changing the direction. And then for the best part, our self foot massage. So take both hands and you can take your thumbs to the bottom of the foot all along the plantar fascia. This is where all those small muscles are. Go ahead and just release all the way from the heel to the ball of the foot, working your way through the arch. Okay, so let's move on to our other leg. Crossing it over. Starting with the ankle rotations. And switching the direction. Our one-legged balancing poses really build support for the ankles as well. So this is a nice way to just to release it. And let's go ahead and move on to our foot massage. And let's go ahead and release the leg down. We'll just do one final stretch here for our neck. So let the shoulders relax down, sitting tall and letting the ear come to the same side shoulder. Just a gentle, nice stretch to the opposite side of the neck. I feel that all the way down into my shoulder. I do too. Very nice stretch. These muscles don't get stretched every day. So let's go ahead and come it to the other side. Just helping to maintain that range of motion of our neck that we start to lose over time. And coming back to center. And let your chin come to your chest. This final stretch, just stretching the back of the neck and bringing it up. Right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. It was such a great treat. And thank you guys for being with us today, too. Thank yourself for being here and doing something so wonderful for you. We'll see you next time.